Hello, so um, I wanted to make this quick tutorial because I haven't seen many videos about how to use um, these sound event parameter uh, entities in order to change parameters of sound events on the fly. So I'm just going to start uh, by first adding a sound. Um, so this is a sound event point. Uh, I will go just pick some random sound. Uh, that one's fine. And we're going to have it start on spawn. So first I want to see if that works. Okay, so that's working. <clears throat> so now... What we're going to do is we're going to add another entity called a sound event param. Um, and what this is going to do is it's going to uh, go into our sound event and alter some of the variables in there. Um, in order to use this, first you have to name it. So I'm going to call our sound event alarm. And then I'm going to call our param alarm underscore param. Uh, and then I'm going to go into the outputs of this. And what you're going to do is you're going to add an output. You're going to select sound event GUID. You're going to target the param. And you're just going to say set sound event GUID. Um, this will tell this uh, sound event to use whatever variables are in this instead of what's in its uh, text document. Um, and you can do this with custom sounds, uh, which is useful. So now this isn't doing anything yet. Um, this little parameter name field is going to be what you use to change your variables. So let me just open up Notepad. Um, hold on, I gotta pause the game. So if you go into Notepad for a sound event, um, uh, go to sound events. So I'm just going to open up some sounds that I made for another mod. So these are what your sound events look like. And you're going to want to put one of these values into the parameter name field. Since we're just doing a very simple volume tutorial, I'm just going to use volume. So if you tell this to be volume, any number that you put in this float value is going to be the new value for the volume parameter. So I'm just going to put it at point 0.1, and I'm going to run the game again, and you'll hear the, the bell is much quieter. So that's pretty useful. What's good about this uh, entity is now I can create a trigger box. So let's just make a block. Um, and we'll tie it to a trigger. And we will say on start touch, target our alarm param, set float value to one, and then I'm going to duplicate that and say on end touch, set the, vo set the volume to zero. So now if I start the game, the game will start the sound at zero volume. And when the player steps into that trigger box, it'll get louder. So it's actually pretty simple and not as messy as you'd expect. Also, it didn't start at zero because I forgot to change the params initial value out of 0.1. So I'll just do the example again. So I've set it to zero. If I run, you 
And now you can see there's no sound alarm. And what's cool about this is you can use it to do all kinds of things like, um, and honestly the documentation, at least as far as I've seen, isn't very complete, but um, there are a lot of parameters that you can change with this, such as like the fall off and um, I know there's an occlusion parameter. Uh, at this moment though, I don't really know what most of these do other than volume. So uh, unfortunately, I don't know how to use this to trigger more. Actually, you know what I did? Okay, so here's something that you can do. Um, you can set this parameter to pitch um, and we'll start the pitch at one. Um, and so this is kind of cool. The thing about pitch though, is if you're using the uh, VR audio, if you're using a VR audio event, you have to restart the sound in order to change the pitch. But nonetheless, I can uh, make it so that on start touch, alarm parameters set point to, let's say it's at uh, 0.5 to make it real low. Um, and also just tell it to uh, fire the sound because we're gonna need to. It can't. It can't bend the sound live like it can with the volume. But um, you can use this for all kinds of things uh, if you want to change the pitch of something on the fly. Uh, so this should start playing immediately. So that's like one cool use for this. Um, and if, as long as soon as people can figure out what other parameters do, then you can get like absolutely crazy with this. Like I'm gonna have it so that when they stop touching it, it uh, raises the pitch. So on end touch, whoops, on end touch, we are going to have the pitch go to two. So this will sound really crazy, um, but it's just an example. I believe if you set your, your sound to be a 2D, you can actually change this pitch live without refiring. So I don't know how useful this would be in uh, a mod, but it's just nice to know that you can do it. Uh, that's pretty much it. Um, yeah, I just I hadn't seen anyone explain this yet, so I just thought I'd make a little video.